This is Biang, one of the most complicated Chinese characters. It stands for a particular sort of noodles and you can find it on some restaurants in Xi'an. It's so hard that in China a professor used it to punish students by making them write it a thousand times. This, by the way, is the simplified version. The traditional version is this one. But why do the Chinese use characters? Wouldn't it be easier to just use a phonetic alphabet? Well, the thing is, without characters, China, as we know it, quite possibly wouldn't even exist. If you look at a map of Europe and East Asia 2000 years ago, you see that both areas are partially unified by large empires, the Roman Empire and the Chinese Han Empire. After the end of the Western Roman Empire, Europe fell apart into smaller states, which were usually at war with each other, and so did China after the collapse of the Han Dynasty. But while China was soon reunified again by the Qin dynasty and later by various other dynasties, Europe pretty much stayed fragmented. Even today's European Union is having some problems. And one important reason for that difference is that Europe had a phonetic alphabet, whereas China had characters. Here's why. If you have an alphabet like in Europe, each letter represents a sound. So what you write is determined by how you speak. So, when a group of people develops a different language, their writing system also changes and they lose their cultural connection to those people who don't speak this language. People who don't speak each other's language and don't have a common writing system tend to separate politically. And what you get are many small countries, each with its own writing system, language and literature. This would also have happened in China. In fact, many of the so-called Chinese dialects are actually as different from each other as German from English. They're mutually unintelligible and therefore by linguistic definition not really dialects, but more like different languages. And here's where the use of characters makes a difference. Chinese characters are logograms. There are symbols which are linked to meaning instead of sound. So Chinese who speak different dialects will read the same text with a different pronunciation, but all of them will be able to read it. This is a reason why throughout China's history, people who spoke very different dialects were able to perceive themselves as part of the same country with a common literature, history and culture. However, the characters themselves haven't always been the same in all of China. They began to get unified by the first emperor and this unification continued throughout the Qin and the Han dynasty. So while the characters were playing a part in unifying China, the Chinese state was also playing an active role in unifying the characters. But here's another thing. Logograms aren't unique to China. In fact, many early societies had logograms. What is unique to China, however, is that China has never abandoned characters. In Imperial China, if you wanted to become an official by going through the Imperial Examination System, you first had to know the characters and then you had to know all these books by heart, which in total are 431,286 characters long. The exams were so important that during the Song Dynasty, the final stage of the exams was supervised by the Emperor himself. Now, if you stood on top of that system and had spent a good part of your life first learning the characters and then learning the classics, you obviously weren't very interested in all of this just getting abolished. But after the end of Imperial China, there was a period of civil war and then Mao Zedong came to power. Mao Zedong had for a long time intended to get rid of Chinese characters and when he came to power many expected that he would do just that and replace them as quickly as possible with the Latin alphabet. Instead, Mao Zedong ordered that a distinctly Chinese alphabet should be developed and this process took 
eight years, during which more than 1,700 versions were invented, and none of them was accepted. So in the end, Mao Zedong and his party ended up just simplifying the characters and using the Latin-based phonetic transcription Pinyin to help people learn the characters, but not to abolish characters. This is actually pretty strange. Mao Zedong is known for having destroyed many traditional aspects of Chinese culture, so why all this fuss about the characters? Well, surprisingly, the answer may have to do with Stalin. According to Mao Zedong's personal secretary, Hu Xiaomu, and also according to Zhou Youguang, the main creator of Pinyin, during Mao Zedong's first visit to the Soviet Union, he spoke to Stalin about the writing reform. And Stalin said that a country like China should have its own writing system and not just copy Latin letters. And this made Mao Zedong change his mind. Does that mean that Stalin saved Chinese characters? Mm, maybe, but I don't think so. Mao Zedong never really seems to have abandoned his dislike towards Chinese characters. Much later, in 1973, in a dialogue with Kissinger, he still said that characters were bad. But his prime minister, Zhou Enlai, recalls that when they tried to get people to use a romanized writing system, everybody they needed to get this done, the teachers, intellectuals and so on, were just too much against it. So Mao Zedong just seems to have postponed it and eventually given up. And if Mao Zedong didn't manage to abolish characters, they probably aren't gonna disappear anytime soon. So what do you think about Chinese characters? Tell us in the comments. And if you like this video, you definitely want to check out this one. It's about the first emperor of China who began to unify the characters, but also did a lot of other things. I'll see you there.